In this lecture, we are going to be looking at two different court cases. One is a Supreme Court case, and one is actually a district court case, but they are both very important um, in Mexican-Americans battle for equality and equal protections in the United States. So we're going to start first with the Hernandez v. Texas case. This is a Supreme Court case. It was decided May 3rd, 1954, 9-0. to It was a unanimous court. And in fact, this case was actually decided two weeks before the Brown versus the Board of Education case, but it is often overlooked. Brown is usually the case we look at for desegregation. Chief Justice Earl Warren did write for the court, and in fact, this was actually his first decision on the court. Now, the Hernandez v. Texas case is very important because this was one of the first cases that started dismantling the Jim Crow laws in the South. Before this case, the state of Texas applied the 14th Amendment solely to blacks and not other races. However, there were Jim Crow laws in place that were enacted specifically towards Mexican Americans in the Southwest. And this was evident in, over, uh, in more than 117 different towns in Texas. Now what's interesting is Mexican Americans were not considered colored but they were actually considered white, but they weren't white, capital W, they were considered other white. And this was a distinct class of white, and because of this, they were often excluded um, because of this otherness. So what happens is before the court is the question, is it a denial of the 14th Amendment Equal Protection Clause to try a defendant of a particular race or ethnicity before a jury where all persons of his race or ancestry have, because of that race or ethnicity, been excluded by the state. So that's the question before the court. Is it unconstitutional for somebody to be tried in front of a jury? Remember, it's supposed to be a jury of your peers. Well, in this case, Hernandez's peers were by law excluded. And so the question is, is that unconstitutional? Well, the answer from the Supreme Court is yes. Yes, it was. So the facts of the case are this. We have Pete Hernandez, who was an agricultural worker, and he was indicted for the murder of Joe Espinoza. He was indicted by an all-Anglo, meaning a white, jury, in, uh, grand jury in Jackson County, Texas. Now, this case is not about the murder itself. Um, honestly, it was pretty clear Hernandez was guilty. Um, this was... Um, Joe Espinoza was his, used to be his boss and the murder took place. It was a bar fight and there were many, many witnesses to it. So Hernandez, interesting enough, is basically by challenging this is taking a chance that if he does get a new trial, he might get a harsher sentence. Well, what happens though in the facts that we have from the attorneys who take up this case is they claimed that Mexican Americans were barred from the jury commission that selected juries. Hernandez attorneys tried to quash the indictment because persons of Mexican descent were excluded from jury service in this case, meaning it's not a jury of his peers. In fact, a Mexican American had not served on a jury in Jackson County in over 25 years, and thus Hernandez claimed that citizens of Mexican ancestry were discriminated against as a special class in Jackson County. The trial court denied the motions. Hernandez was then found guilty of murder and sentenced by the all-white jury to life in prison. His attorneys appealed, and affirming the lower court's decision, the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals in 1952 found that, quote, Mexicans are members of and within the classification of the white race as distinguished from members of the Negro race, unquote. And therefore, they rejected the petitioner's argument that they were a special class under the meaning of the 14th Amendment. And they said, no, you're you are um, looked at as white, and you were convicted by an all-white jury. Further, the court also pointed out that so far as we are advised, no member of Mexican nationality has ever challenged this classification of being white or Caucasian. So basically they were like, well, no one's challenged this before, so everyone else has been fine with being considered white. Well, what happens, his attorneys um, uh, appeal to the Supreme Court, 
1954, the Supreme Court ruled in a unanimous opinion delivered by Chief Justice Earl Warren, the court held that the 14th Amendment protects those beyond the two classes of white or Negro. Up to this point with the 14th Amendment, basically they were just looking at white and Negro, and it was a two-class system. The Warren Court said, no, it's not a two-class system, and the 14th Amendment extends to other racial groups and communities, depending on whether it can be factually established that such a group exists within a community. So what happens in reversing, the court concluded that the 14th Amendment is not directed solely against discrimination due to the two-class theory. But in this case, it also covers those of Mexican ancestry. Why? The facts of the matter proved that Mexican ancestry was looked at as a distinct group. And they said this was established by the fact that the distinction between whites and Mexican ancestry of those of Mex those individuals of Mexican ancestry was made clear at the Jackson County Courthouse itself where there were two men's toilets. One was unmarked and the other one was marked colored men and hombres aquí, which means men here in Spanish. And they said by that fact, that, that clearly we had a separate restroom for Mexican men, meaning they were being treated different. And they said that no Mexican, no person of Mexican ancestry had served on the jury in 25 years. They said because of this, it was clearly shown that those of Mexican ancestry were treated differently than other whites. And they said this othering establishes a link to whiteness as the othering creates an identity away from whites as the laws attempt to categorize them as white, but they place them in a place to be exploited and treated as different. So even though the law is saying Mexican Americans are white, the actions clearly are showing that they are not treated as other whites are, that they are this other white and are treated differently. Because of this, the court said Mexican Americans were a special class and entitled to equal protection under the 14th Amendment. So the court said Hernandez had to be retried by a new jury that was composed without discrimination towards Mexican Americans. And this is what ended up happening. And in his new trial, which had Mexican Americans on the jury, he was also still convicted of the murder. However, this case was a major win for Mexican Americans to be seen as a distinct race and a distinct group. And because of that, the protections of the 14th Amendment apply. Now, we're going to see this taken further in the second case we're going to look at. And again, this is not a Supreme Court case. It never made it up there, but its ruling is just as important, if not more. This case is Cisneros versus the Corpus Christi Independent School District in 1970. Corpus Christi is also in Texas. So what happens with this case was this was the first case to extend the United States Supreme Court ruling from Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas. It extends that decision to Mexican Americans. Again, this was not a Supreme Court case. It was a district court case, but still it's very important and its effects were very far-reaching. And what makes this so important is in this case, it didn't even just look at Mexican Americans as a special class. It formally recognized them as a minority group and that this minority group could still be frequently discriminated against. And as Mexican Americans as a minority, more protections or the protections of the 14th Amendment are more, I guess, more easily applied. So what happens in this is the decision replaced that other idea of Mexican Americans as other white, as established by Hernandez, and formally recognized Mexican Americans as their own minority group. So what happened in this case was in 1968, Jose Cisneros and 25 other Mexican American parents filed suit against the Corpus Christi Independent School District. And they claimed the school district was operating a dual school system at all, level, all levels on a de facto base, meaning based on the facts, it's clear there is a school for whites and a school for um, African Americans and Mexican Americans. They argued 
One of the attorneys in the Cisneros case was James de Alda, and he actually was an experienced Mexican-American civil rights lawyer, and he had participated in the Hernandez case before the Supreme Court. So he argues that the Mexican-Americans were an identifiable minority group that had been illegally separated by the state action. Remember, this would be according to Brown versus Board. Whereas the school district maintained that since there was no history of state law requiring segregation, a dual system could not exist. What happens is Judge Wood Woodrow Seals found the school board consistently and consciously fostered a system that perpetuated traditional segregation. This included a system that bused Anglo-white students to schools out of their neighborhoods, meaning to other white schools. They renovated old schools in black and Mexican-American neighborhoods rather than building new ones. They assigned black and Hispanic teachers to the segregated schools in limited hiring such teachers at the other schools, meaning the white schools. The school board also lacked a majority to minority busing system, meaning you didn't take the majority white students and bus them into the non-white areas. Judge Seals cited the other white argument as adjacent proof of segregation, but he, he relied primarily on the application of unconstitutional segregations of Mexican Americans as an identifiable minority group based on physical cultural, religious, and linguistic distinctions. And that's what makes this case so important, is that it formally recognizes Mexican Americans not as this other white, but as an, their own distinct minority group. And because of this, it's a different standard of review when we are looking at a group that claims um, racial discrimination once you have an established minority group, it's often a little bit easier to prove these claims. So that's why we're also looking at this case because of the importance it had for the Mexican-American culture in the United States.